What's up, amigos? Time to do a Seraph updated deck profile with 50 cards in the main deck. So let's get right into it. Check out Dueling Guard's deck boxes, playmats, and binders, the great quality products that are anime based. They continually have more anime options becoming available. Use the affiliated link in the description for a 5% discount on your next purchase. Starting with the right line, we can play any starter that you want. It's totally preference at the, that point. I am playing the grade one prison unit, so that way we can actually get our prison card and set it up. And so I only play one copy. And that's really what you need. If you're going second, be mindful of calling a regard so you're able to rest it and then soul charge three from that point too. But this is all we really need from this card. You also wanna play the grade two. This starts your prisoning from their hand and it actually matters because there's a grade one that only activates if you imprison this turn and that's for Lifeful Royale grade one, which I'll get more into that as we go into the early game essentially. And then of course our grade three Seraph, this is still good. And what's really cool too is that your grade three turn is actually not bad because you're able to prison a certain amount of units. And if you get to the three or more, you'll be 23 K base with triple drive. And then of course you're able to prison cards to get there with a counter blast. You choose to prison them. And it also works on rearguard circle. So that I will, so that will come up later with a Forbidal superior call, for example, from the drop zone. We are playing three copies of Seraph pure light. So this is the grade four that you want to eventually write your turn four and then moving forward, rewriting. And uh, I reduced this to three because there is security upgrader as a grade one, and I do play a play set of that card. So that superior rides wherever this is in deck, hand, or drop. Most of the time you're gonna deck in from your deck, but also if you end up with some in the drop, you can actually get those back too. So that's why I was able to reduce this, reduce this to three and feel pretty comfortable with it. Again, this potentially prison six cards, and then of course your front row will get 5K for every two cards in the prison. And then ideally you wanna get to 10 because your entire front row will also get an additional crit. And that's where you could be even lethal at four damage. We're also playing four copies of all costs. This is a phenomenal card because it does a lot of things. On um, place prison something from their drop, but it also serves as a 10K shield if you really need it. Assuming that you have two or more imprisoned, which is pretty fairly easy, especially if you start really prisoning units early on and they can't necessarily get them all out. So you just need that too. And if you want to use it defensively, you can use it at that point. It also increases the attack with 5k, so that way it's 18k, but you often pair it up with a 13k booster, so that makes actually 31. And then of course the power that you'll get from Pure Light, it really makes big numbers, and then the demanding of two or more Guardians as well. So it makes it really difficult and annoying for your opponent to guard those attacks. This is one of the saving graces for the deck too, because it is a three attack deck. So you want to make sure where you have some type of guard restriction or some crit pressure, this in combination with Pure Light really makes that pressure. A card to help with actually fetching Pure Lights if you need to see them in hand, if you haven't seen a security upgrade, you can use Forbidal and also call the Aquas as well. But you could also have an optional grade three over here with Charlene. And Charlene is also phenomenal because it restricts normal units, but also Blitz Orders from hand to Guardian Circle and then playing Blitz Orders just in general. So this actually gets around like Sanctitude, for example, but also your grade one, the grade one PGs that your opponents are trying to use on your high crit units. It does have the continuous skill where if you have five or less in the prison, this unit cannot attack. So you have to be very mindful and that's why we only play one copy too. So we can search it with Forbidal if we need to later on or we hard draw it later in the game, which at that point can make it like game ending too. Onto the rest of the core deck as well. So we're playing four copies of Cusp Spring. And what's really good about this card is that it works on place from anywhere. Uh, we used to play Macarite, but I took that out as well because it only works from hand. And because you're also superior calling from your deck, this card is a phenomenal option to use, which also adds to your prison count. You wanna make sure that you are able to achieve the 10 or more as fast as possible, but you're also forcing your opponent to prison cards and they're also constantly trying to take them out where you can use cards like Muna, the grade one, to really draw for advantage at that point too. So as soon as it sees one pop out of the order zone from the prison, you can soul blast one to draw a card and you can have multiple cards of Muna on the field and they each proc at the same time. However, the skill to be able to draw is a soft once per turn, basically a once per turn per copy, essentially. This card is a godsend. It's also one of the newer cards that just came out a couple weeks ago too. So that way Seraph can build a decent enough defense in the hand wise because it has a lot of reliance of on place or just putting cards on the field to be able to do prisoning effects too. So this kind of returns your advantage at that point too. Furthermore, if you have three or more in the prison, this also gets like a resist type of ability. So it cannot be chosen by your opponent's card effects, but also it gets 5K continuously. So it's a 13K attacker or a booster, which most of the time you leave it in the back row. This is also a great card that you can use early game if needed to, to like 
call immediately turn one. This is also a great target for the, the prison order to rest the rear guard if you do go second as well. Four copies of Security Upgrader. So I've seen deck lists that have played three. I think four is still like the best thing that you want to do. I've had games where I didn't see the Great Force of Ref in my hand or I didn't see the Security Upgrader. And so I feel like having the four is just like increasing the consistency. Not to mention that even if you do Superior Call this card with the other card, your opponent can able to remove it with some type of effect too. And if they do, then you miss out on the potential Superior right next turn as well. What's also really good about this card is that it also prisons cards from the drop zone. So you may not get the full six prison from the Seraph you're like ride. So this can help you get you closer to the 10 if you're like really right there. There have been many games where I've literally come up short at nine and I'm sure you other Seraph pure light players feel the same way too. So just having more cards to be able to like prison units, but also like increase the consistency of superior riding pure light. And what I really like to do is use this skill instead of hard riding the grade four. And it's because it also reduces the skill to zero counter blast and just a soul blasting of Seraph at that point too. So you can use your counter blast for the grade one instead, and you're not starving yourself of like counter blast essentially. And for whatever reason, if you don't see security upgrader or if you don't see the great force of Seraph, Lifo is a good example where you can actually, if you already prison a card, then you can counter blast and prison another rear guard and then check the top five for something that's equal or less than your Vanguard's grade. This is where you can, if you get to turn four, essentially with a Seraph, you can call anything four or less, essentially. But even early on, you can get a security upgrader or a Muna and put them in the back row. And you're pretty much good to go with boosters or even attackers if you need to call like grade twos or your grade threes. This card is really like helpful. It generates advantage continuously at your turns at will. And it also helps prison cards at the same time. So you get a really a lot of value. And with all these cards that you need as well, you really need to combo off essentially there have been games literally where i didn't have the security upgrader but because of life i actually checked the top five and i get the security upgraded and then all of a sudden i can pop off pure light during my main phase <laughs> those are like really powerful turns too so you might as well take advantage of it playing four copies of pgs uh again you ride grade four so sanctitude is useless i learned that the hard way <laughs> a year ago uh so you want to max out on four pgs that are grade ones essentially so lastly what are the four cards that i added to the deck essentially and there's a couple aspects that i thought about so i added two agarouche the blitz order and also one copy of the violet which is a grade two pg essentially and one of the things that uh, Seraph struggles, in my opinion, is guard value in your hand, but also some early game. So Agra Rouge is pretty much the same in adding offensiveness and defensiveness. This gets power. Uh, this also is a 15k shield when you need to actually drop it as guarding. It's a great two, so it intercepts too if it's in the front row at that point. The Blitz Order is actually really nice because you can actually get to the point where you have enough prison orders or prison cards, I should say where you can make things something like negative at that point too. And especially if they focus on a restander as well, this is till the end of turn. So you make a restander pretty much useless at that point too. And it's a blitz order, which you don't play any other blitz orders. Again, you can't play Sanctitude because it doesn't pair out nicely. So you can actually just stick this in and be good to go and not have to worry which blitz order you have to play this turn kind of deal. And then of course the grade two PG. So some decks do have grade two or less that are still attacking and stuff. This card doesn't shine as much in decks that have grade three, such as like Zorga or Bastion and other grade threes that are like pushing against you. So this may not come up in those matches, but for everything else, this is nice. It's a soul blast. It just requires one or more prisoned units when you do this. And it's a soul blast. You actually have plenty of soul to be able to do what you need to do. And lastly, the triggers we're playing eight crit. We're playing the four effect just in case you need the soul. Uh, you could replace them with vanilla crits totally. I like these ones as well. So it's totally up to you. In fact, if you call with the grade one, sometimes you may want to actually have a decent number. So that can come up totally up to you. Playing three draws with the OT. Uh, this deck is a combo uh, piece deck too. So you need your pieces. And defensively, this helps a lot too with draw power. And then of course your OT is very aggressive. The point to you get your front triggers to really benefit uh, comes later in the game and sometimes you would just rather have your pieces to make sure you're consistently doing what you need to do as a Seraph deck, essentially. Then we're playing the four heals. I'm playing three of the 15k shields and then one effect heal. This is totally up to you and depending on the metagame too. I see decks that have the crit gaining type of skills. Uh, so I still use this just in case. Everything else is pretty like I, you're 
choice at that point. The deck is still pretty solid. It's just not as like tier one in that sense with this meta game. It does require a lot of practice and knowing what to do at certain situations too. Is it benefit to call certain cards while sacrificing some hand advantage or also like prisoning a certain amount of cards, especially if you don't hit those significant thresholds of like three cards in the prison or 10 cards in the prison. I really recommend just practicing with the deck. In fact, some of your matchups too may struggle against you because they heavily rely on resources such as like CB, Soul, or even key pieces to keep in the soul or on the field, which make it really challenging for them, especially if they start using counter blast to call two from prison or soul blast to call one from prison. It puts them in weird positions where they're not doing what they're doing best as well. Personally, I enjoy this deck. Bushiroad has done a good job overall to make this deck, you know, it balance in a way where it's not like crazy back then with like Link Joker <laughs> with Chaos Breaker, how it started too. So having the opponent to be able to like call back their cards with using a resource, I think was the right call uh, when they created this deck to begin with. And I'm glad that it's seeing support that it actually is keeping up with the metagame too. Again, it's not the best deck, but I definitely enjoy it. And feel free to tweak the four cards that you want to add with this new format in 50 cards in the main deck as well. I just went the route of adding more shield value, but also some extra early game pressure that you can just call regards and be able to attack if needed to as well. If you want to support the channel, check out the affiliate links with TCG Player, 50 Card Shop, Trading Card Min, Card Trader Zero, and also check out Dueling Guards, phenomenal anime products to increase your swag. Until the next one, amigos. Bye!